seated in the presence of the Lord. In exactly one week, we are going to be commencing the Top Life International Convention. I don't know what to use to describe these, but we are going to have the most extraordinary experiences individually and the, the most extraordinary experience we have ever had in our lives as a corporate body. If you believe that, give me an extraordinary amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this month is the month of the extraordinary, and I, I need you to pay close attention to what God is saying. This is the 11th month, an equivalent of the 11th hour of the year. This is when God responds emergency. And today, particularly, is the 11th month of the 11th day of the month. And this, usually around the world, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month is called the Remembrance Day. This is, you can check, you can Google it. I'm not making it up. So that's when they do things like um, the day of remembrance for uh, military people that were lost and all of that. You go and lay wreaths and stuff like that. But particularly, this is that day and this is that month that God remembers us. He comes and he intervenes. He does it. And it's evident for everyone to see. And I believe that someone will be remembered today. It's not like God has forgetfulness, but he zeroes in on you and puts the searchlight on you. Let's turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. In this Bible study today, we are still investigating the dominion mandate. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read verse 11 together. I will read verse 26 to 28. Then you, myself, and all of us here and everyone in this service around the world will read verse 11 together. And the Lord God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over, every, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This is listing out why God left us on earth to take dominion. Amen? And listed out for us the steps that we must take to arrive at that place called dominion. He said, first of all, be fruitful. When you are fruitful, then you can multiply the fruit you have born. And when you have multiplied the fruit you have born, you can use it to fill everywhere, which is to replenish. And when you have filled everywhere, you can be said to be subduing. And by the time you come to the place of subduing, you can now be classified as having or taking dominion. So you can see the steps, isn't it? Go with me to verse 11. Because you see, we have dealt with being fruitful. We have dealt with multiplying. And then there's yet left for us certain the other steps to go into great details. But I want to take us to what do you really need? What did God give to you and I with which to be fruitful? If God has said to you and I, be fruitful, multiply, with what will God ask us to do something and not give us the equipment with which to do it? I think not. Verse 11, everyone reading together after two counts, one and two. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so amen now god has said be fruitful and that is the first prerequisite for dominion that means if you miss it at the level of fruitfulness 
There is no way you can achieve multiplication, which means all the other steps will be far-fetched. You can't be anything else. So it starts with being fruitful. But the point is, how do I become fruitful? How? The very first time God mentions what we are about to get into now is in verse 11. He says in verse 11 of Genesis chapter 1, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree. So you see the word fruit occurring here. He told us in verse 28, be fruitful. Here he says the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so. So you can see that God mentioned fruit in verse 11. And in the same breath, he mentions seed. And he says that the fruit tree yields fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself. You know, the first set of trees, because this is not referring to a human being now, but you, the principles are there. You extract the principles. If you go further down in the process of creation, you will see it is mentioning animals. And then, of course, when you get to the end of this chapter, it begins to mention the human being. But the principle is first mentioned in verse 11. He says that the fruit has seed in itself. So the very first set of plants that God created were full adults. God spoke the full adult into being. And when he did it, ladies and gentlemen, from then till now, God has never had to create another adult plant. God has never had to create another tree. Do you know why? When he created that full fruiting plant, he put within it seed. And the seed he put within that plant, which is in the fruit of the plant, has the capacity to give you another tree. So if you, if you go to God now and say, God, give me a tree. Oh God, give me a tree that has fruit in it. Oh God, give me a tree that has fruit in it. It's a waste of time and effort. Your prayer is a waste. It's unfounded and it's a complete disrespect for the principles God has set in motion. It won't work. So what do you do? If you want another tree, what do you do? Get hold of a fruit from a tree, get the seed out of that fruit, and plant it. Then you will have another plant that will result in another tree. So how can I be fruitful? How? Get the seed. Nurture the seed by planting and it will give you another plant that will give you another fruit which we have seed in itself that will be planted again and it will give you another plant that will give you another fruit which will have seed in itself and then there is perpetuity. Whether you are talking about plants, you are talking about animals, you are talking about any creature whatsoever, even in the field of technology, we are going to find, it, find that out very shortly. Because many of us can relate this principle to any other field except the agrarian field, which is the agricultural sector. So we think it is irrelevant to our profession or our vocation. So fruit, whose seed is in itself? Say with me, fruit, whose seed is in itself? Say again, fruit, whose seed is in itself. One more time, say it like you mean it. Fruit whose seed is in itself. 
So every fruit has within it the seed that will be able to regenerate that fruit. That is why the principle of fruiting is called production. And the principle of multiplication is called reproduction. You are produced by fruitage. You reproduce to multiply the fruit you have produced earlier on. Alright? Now, when God says, be fruitful, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, 28, although he doesn't mention categorically seed, he implies seed from what we have seen in Genesis 1, 11. Are you following me? It implies seed. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, he says that the seed is in itself, it's in the fruit. Is in the plant that he created earlier. So you as a fruit, you as a fruit now, you have seed within you. That is why you can give birth to another human being. Your business has a seed. If you can identify the seed, you can reproduce your business. Let me preempt myself a bit. This microphone has a seed. If you didn't have a seed, you cannot produce another copy of this microphone. It takes seed to reproduce. This MacBook has a seed in itself. When you identify that seed, you can use that seed to reproduce the MacBook. That's why you don't have one MacBook in the world. They are all over the world. Someone came to my office today. He had a new MacBook. How can you reproduce them? Because the equipment has the seed in, is in itself. There was excitement in the news yesterday when Pfizer came out and said they had been able to synthesize uh, a coronavirus vaccine. That is 90% effective. So they have all excitement. United Kingdom already placed order for... 100, I think it's 100 million, you know, doses. Japan, 120 million doses. I think the United States, another 100 million doses. The whole of Europe, I think 200 million doses. Everybody, I didn't see any African nation there. They have divided the thing amongst themselves. But Corona knows that we are not his mate. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said that we are all going to die. So we, by, the, by the estimation, by the month of October, the continent of Africa, almost everybody in the continent of Africa would have con contracted coronavirus and most of them would be dead, courtesy of Mrs. Gates. For we are. There are many Nigerians that have done the antigen test for coronavirus. And they have actually had coronavirus, but there was no single symptom that manifested. We are the punishers of coronavirus <laughs> by the grace of God. So when you look for coronavirus anywhere in the world, ask them, Nigeria, Corona will say, just leave me alone, please, leave, leave me alone. But we pray for all of those other countries that are still having issues with coronavirus. We, we pray that the power of God will liberate everyone in those countries. In the name of Jesus. We are what we are by the grace of God. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? So essentially what we are saying tonight from this study is that fruit is related to seed. You get that? Fruit is related to to see the seed is a part of fruit which is within the fruit in itself so fruit and seed are integral they work together within the fruit there is seed right first the tree and then that adult completely tree has its fruit and the fruit has within itself the seed and that seed is what generates now
This is the principle. For everything that is produced, like I have been listing out, using this system and other things, there is fruit part, there is a fruit part, and then there is a seed part for every single thing that is produced. This speaker is the fruit. There is a seed part. If you know it, you can reproduce this speaker. This house, didn't be, it didn't start like a house. It started as a drawing that was drawn by Pastor Charles. That is the seed. If you want to rebuild this house, go and get Pastor Charles' drawing. You can reproduce this house exactly the way it is. So that plan of the house is the seed. If you don't have the seed, you can't reproduce the house. Now with that drawing, you can reproduce this building everywhere in the world. You have the opportunity to. And they will look exactly like this. Why? You have the seed. Amen? So within the fruit is the seed. Apple, there's seed inside. Mango is in there. Orange is in there. So in God's economy, we recognize that there is always a fruit part and there is a seed part. Say with me, there is always a fruit part and there is a seed part. In everything, there is a fruit part and there is a seed part. So, what's the role of the fruit and what's the role of the seed? The fruit satisfies you, but the seed reproduces. The fruit is for today's benefit. The seed is for the future. And God has no regard for people who don't respect the future? Even your faith is, a, is an investment into your future. The Bible says, it calls Esau a profane person. You know why? God rejected Esau because Esau had no regard for the future. Why did God respect Jacob? God respected Jacob because Jacob had respect for the future. He was interested in the seed. He was interested in the anointing that will regenerate God's covenant. Esau was not. He sold it for a, a pot of beans, as it were. If you don't think, if you don't pay attention to your future, you will not occupy a very important place in God's scheme of things. That's why God has no respect for people who mis mistreat, maltreat, and they are not interested in bringing up their children. The school they go to is not important to you. Whether they are doing their homework is not important to you. They absolutely not. Let them just, whatever they want to do, let them do it. No matter how much you pray, the, the anointing you are praying for will not come because it will be a waste. God doesn't deal with people individually. He deals with households. If there were no people that, that households that the future matters to, Jesus would not have come. God said, I must deal with this Abraham. I must go downstairs and I must relate with him very carefully because I have seen that he will be a great man in the future. Why? He will teach his children my ways. Genesis chapter 18. You must be interested in the future of what God has placed in your hands. Whether it's your job, whether it's the church responsibility in your hands, or the children that God has given to you, the marriage he has given to you, you must pay attention. God is not a God of today alone. God is a God of generations. Amen? The fruit satisfies, but the seed reproduces. So if you see a man who makes all the money and, and, and finishes everything, God cannot do much with such a person. Because he's more interested in the reward of today at the expense of the establishment of tomorrow. He's more interested in, in today's satisfaction at the expense of the 
guarantees of tomorrow. So the fruit is the part you eat and enjoy. But the seed is the one you invest to secure your future. Amen? And how you handle that seed is critical. Many years ago, I was growing up in the village. You know, my grandmother used to have, you know, we used to have this barn at the back of our house. My grandfather had this yam barn. You see a lot of yam, tubers of yam, like that. And then, but in my grandmother's kitchen, this corn, there's a corn barn over her, her, her stove. You know, this local stove where you use firewood. There's a yam, there's a, not yam, but corn barn. So she, you see a lot of corn from one edge to the other. So I, I was asking, why are you putting this here? He said that, so that the, the heat will be gently heating them up so that weevils will eat them up because that is the best corn in all the farm so that when they plant the next season, they will have the best crop or the best harvest. See, they were making investment into the future that, so that the future will be better than today by selecting the best seed. So the integrity of your seed determines the integrity of your harvest. Now, every income you have has these two components to it. If you earn 10,000 naira, inside that 10,000 naira, there is fruit for you to eat and there is seed for you to reproduce another 10,000 or more. Every income. It's recommended that you don't spend more than 70% of what you earn. 10% is already God's own. When you give your tithe, right, you are, not giving, you are not giving any extra. That one is already God's property. It's the rent you pay for living on earth. Do you pay for oxygen? Don't you think the owner of the oxygen needs payment? There's water everywhere. Dew every morning. The sun is shining. Have you ever paid for sun? You're having problem with Nepal. You're talking about sun. That tight belongs to God. He said, do everything as enjoy this world, but give me 10%. Don't touch it. Even in the garden of Eden, the Lord said, of every plant that is in the garden, thou mayest eat of it, but of this one that is in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That is the principle of the tithe inside the garden of Eden. So you don't consume everything. You don't. You touch 30% of your income, you do it to your detriment. So the seed is that non negotiable that you set aside. You set it aside. As it were, like Jesus, you kill yourself today so you can resurrect tomorrow. So it's a sacrifice. You, 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 suffer, the, 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 you suffer the crown of thorns today so you can wear the crown of gold tomorrow. That's the principle of the seed, the investment you make into the future. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So let's go further down the road. Hallelujah. Now, what does it mean to be fruitful? What does it mean to be fruitful? What does fruit look like? Genesis 26 verse 22 tells us, and they digged another well and strove for that also, and they called the name of it Sitna. And verse 22 says, and they removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called it Rehoboth. He said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Hallelujah. Now we go to, um, we see that here, Isaac is not saying that, you know, we are going to give birth to more babies. That's not what he's saying. Giving birth to babies is one aspect of fruitfulness. I've told you this since the past 
few weeks. God wants us to give birth to babies. But fruitfulness is beyond giving birth to babies. So plus the giving birth to babies, you need to be able to give birth to the things that will cater for the babies. Don't go and have nine children. I'm saying it, it's, it's God that is giving it. The Lord said be fruitful and multiply. So we are doing it. We are doing it. As you are doing that one, be doing what will be feeding them. Hello? As you are doing it, be doing the thing that will be feeding them. Or else, hey, stop doing. In, in Genesis chapter 40, 49 verse 22, the Bible says, And Joseph is a fruitful bough. All right? A fruitful bough by a well. His branches run over the wall. That's the New King James Version. Amen? Joseph is a fruitful bough. He said Joseph is fruitful, a fruitful bough by a well. He says his branches, he, he branched out. It's, it runs over the wall, walls and limits. So he was so fruitful that he exceeded limitations. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. You'll be so fruitful, you will creep over the walls and rise over the walls of limitations. Let that be your portion in your business, in your family, in your job, every aspect of your life. Say amen, somebody. He is called fruitful, but you see, Joseph had only two children. Only two children. But the Bible calls him fruitful. So, that tells you that the scope of the meaning of the word fruitful is beyond biological fruitfulness. So, we've got to do more than born in. In just the born, the born, the born, the born. So, the income born, born. I like the way this pigeon English puts these things a lot of times. It's part of me from around the world. Praise God. See, Isaac had Esau and Jacob, no other children, only two children, and yet the Bible says that he was fruitful. So that tells you the scope of the word fruitful is beyond biological children. But now, what is the meaning? What, when God says somebody is fruitful, what does he mean? God is not saying we shouldn't give birth. It's part of it. All right? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 says, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Plural. So fruitfulness relates to what you do. So a righteous person is supposed to be fruitful. He says, Say to the righteous. So I say to you, I say to you in the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you. You shall eat the fruit of your doings in the name of Jesus. In, in Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners. I'm quoting from the New King James Version now nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever he does, shall prosper. See? So, the righteous man that is fruitful is compared to a tree that produces. He keeps doing it. He keeps producing. He's producing. He's producing. He's doing things. He says, whatsoever he do it shall prosper. He's doing things. You will do things. You will, you will do unusual things. You will do extraordinary things. May you do extraordinary things. May you make a mark by doing unusual things in your generation. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Job chapter 1 verse 5, the secret of Job's greatness is highlighted amongst other things. He says, Thus did Job continually. The man was a doer. The man was a doer. I pray today you will not only be a talker. As you talk, that is how you will do. 
And as you are doing, God will be blessing you because he blesses the doers. For it's not the hearer only that is blessed, but the doer of what he hears. That is the man that is blessed. Thank you, Jesus. So Isaac the righteous, Joseph the righteous, they distinguished themselves in fruitfulness by what they did. By what they did. Flourishing and prospering in what you do is the characteristic of that word fruitfulness. From today, your life will begin to manifest genuine fruitfulness. Everything you are doing, you will be flourishing, 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 flourishing. The grace to flourish, let it be your portion. In Jesus' matchless name. As you take the communion today, I want you to believe God for that unleashing of presence, of power to release you into the place of flourishing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and verses 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 and 11. I think I'm behind schedule now, so let's just wrap this up quickly. There's so much more to say here, but let's wrap this up quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Second Corinthians 9, verse 10 and 11. Now, he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. He that supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So we are introduced here to, to the fact that God is committed to the enterprise of fruitfulness. It's a divine commitment. He's committed for, to your being fruitful. So what's the raw material for fruitfulness? He supplies seed to the sower. But that's not all he does. He also supplies bread to the eater. So that tells you in God's supply, when you treat his supply as a whole, in its entirety, there are two dimensions to his supply. Within that supply is the element of seed and then the element of bread for eating. Seed is God made. Bread is refined seed. Is man made. So, bread will be to somebody as the seed that you have planted. Or which has come to you as fruit. You know, I love the illustration that Dr. Menzel Tabil gave it. He said, if you are born, the hospital that you were born in, did you build it? Did you build the hospital where you were born in? No. Even if it's your father's hospital, you didn't build it. Your father built it. So in that sense, you are eating bread. That hospital is bread you are eating. The doctors that took delivery of the child, the nurses. Did you train them? No, you are eating the bread. All you are doing is sucking. Sucking doctor, sucking nurse. Your mom's breast milk, did you create the breast milk? So, you are eating bread. So, every one of us, we are born giving bread to eat. But equipped with seed that we will eventually sow so that when we harvest the fruit, we can now provide bread for somebody else who is born. The cycle continues. The cycle continues. Amen? So God, in that sense, is committed to the enterprise of fruitfulness. So God provided the tool of seed for us to generate fruit. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, let's wrap this up. Bread for food. Like I said earlier, seed is God-given, but bread is man-made. Bread is processed, seed is not processed. Bread is for eating, seed is for sowing. You are born with seed to sow, and you are born giving bread to eat. The bread you are benefiting from at the point of birth was provided by somebody else. But you are armed with your seed with which you will generate fruit that other people will also benefit from throughout your lifetime. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Have you seen a baby that, that, that produced pampas? Say, look, as I'm coming from my mother's womb, but there are all the packs of pampas. You will put it by the shoulder. As they are giving birth to the baby, they will give birth to a pack of pampas. So this is what I will use throughout. I brought it from heaven. From which heaven? The heaven of your mother's womb? Huh? No. God has given you this. So you, when you eat, when you finish eating this bread that you have enjoyed, eh, you use your seed and bake bread for other people to eat. That's why you must go to school. Don't sit out there and say, look, I, I'm, I don't want to go to school. For what? The people that made the roads that you are walking on, didn't they go to school? So you will be a liability to society and be blocking company with palm fronts. You must go to school, whether you like it or not. Don't look at me like that, Nigerians. That primary school, you will go to that primary school and you, you will pass that exam or else we will lay the stripes so that you will be healed. You must go to school. You must go to that secondary school and pass that exam without cheating. You must go to university, sit down in the lecture, understand the lectures, grasp the principles and pass your exams and come out qualified without sorting out people. How can you be a graduate that cannot articulate one sentence in, in English? And you are an English graduate. I was come three days ago. And such things. Praise the name of Jesus. Alright? Now, let's close by identifying what a seed is. Right? I'll mention one and then during the next services we'll treat the remaining. Amen? Amen. But take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. A seed becomes effective only when it is planted. Say, I will plant my seed. Say it again. Say, I will plant my seed. Until it is planted, it remains limited. And in fact, the appearance of a seed is laughable if you compare it to what it eventually becomes when it is given the opportunity to manifest after it has been planted. Have you seen a mango seed? Can you compare it to a mango tree? When you see a big flourishing mango tree with all the mango fruits, then you can't compare it to the seed. The seed actually looks laughable. Have you seen an orange seed compared to a flourishing orange plant? You can't compare it. The seed always appears. That's why the Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. He's talking about seed. At a point in your life, when you are not yet bearing the fruits the way the, to, to your full capacity, you can appear laughable. A seed is the boss who is presently a servant. That's a seed. A seed is a masterpiece that is just a sketch. A seed is a building that is only a plan. That's a seed. A seed is a mechanic who actually is an inventor. A seed is that little boy who is riding the, who is pushing tire along the streets. But in the future, he will own a huge company. That's a seed. A seed is a map center that will become a whole full church with thousands of people very soon. That's a seed. A seed is a pastor who is still failing as a map champion. Say you are evangelism champion. He can't even win a soul. He's still trembling. But he is the pastor of 10,000 members in a few years time. That's a seed. A seed is the one who is still croaking in the choir. He can't hold a key. If you go to A, he will jump to B. If you go to B, he will enter B flat. You go to B flat, he will enter C. Everywhere, the pianist will be pursuing him. He can't catch him. But a phenomenal singer is in the making. 
if he does not despise the days of small beginnings. That's a seed. A seed is that man that looks like me many years ago. You are bony, rickety looking. Your bony black fingers, your complexion is as dark as the night. And then you go and propose and someone tells you, I will not marry your kind. But you know the raging inferno of vision on your inside. That is a seed. Because very soon, the same person will wish they told you yes seven times. A seed is God will make, not an already made. You see, many people miss destiny because they do not understand the concept of the seed. They miss destiny. He tells you today, look, man, God bless you. Uh, help me to break my fast. I've not eaten for the past three days. He said, look, this is what I say in this church. Irresponsible people like you uh, and then wash the person down. You know, I know there are people who misbehave, who are irresponsible, but there are a few that are sincere. So when they come, you need to sense it and know that this one is seed. Let me put fertilizer on this seed. You have asked me for a bottle of Coke. Come, sit down. Uh, Dickiness, give him jollof rice and hold it with moi moi and add the Coke to it. Say, eat, 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 for the journey ahead of you is long. In the future, when he's CEO of that company, he will remember you. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. A seed is that 15,000 naira that you have used to buy shares in that young upcoming company. But it looks like there's no future. But something within you tells you this thing has a future. It's the spirit of God prompting you through the principle of appreciating seeds. In the future, that 15,000 naira will become 150 million. That seed. Let me close my system before we pray. I want you to appreciate the value of seed. I read many years ago. I, okay, it was a friend of mine who told me. He showed me the material. Archaeologists were digging through the pyramids of Egypt. And they found one solitary seed of wheat. So they took that seed of wheat, just one. And they analyzed the edge of the seed through a process they call carbon dating. And they found out that the edge of that seed was 4,000 years old. But the seed was there. It was still a seed. One tiny, weeny wheat seed. So they decided they were going to cultivate it. So in a controlled environment, they cultivated the seed. And thankfully, it grew. So for 4,000 years, life was still in the seed. It grew and became a plant. They took the harvest from the plant and regrew. It became a garden. And they took the, and regrew until it became a whole field of wheat. But it started with a seed that was dormant for 4,000 years. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Don't, don't despise me because you think I am infinitesimal now. Don't despise the power of a seed. The Bible says that the seed of this woman that you have messed up today, he will bruise the head of the serpent. Don't despise. Even you, 2020 don't has been a year. Don't look down on your future because your today looks small. There's no seed that is bigger than the harvest. You are bigger than what you really look like now. As you take this communion today, I believe God 2020 that, that has been a year of so many ups and downs. This will be, will be unleashed. Oh, it will happen emergency, this emergency month. And that process of fruitage, that process of harvest will be accelerated. 
if you're out there, out there in, in a virtual service, just hold on with me a little bit. The power that raised Jesus from the dead will come upon that seed. That witch cannot stop the seed. That power from the pit of hell cannot stop the seed. No, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. It has the capacity to do it. By the next time we are pressing it into this subject, we are going to see more about the power of the seed and how you can fertilize the seed that is in your life. And then your destiny can begin to flourish the way it ought to flourish. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are miracle workers in this place, but you will never know because you are despising the seed. Today you are praying for headache and it's taking you a long time. You don't know that a day is going to come when just your wink will set 100 people free instantly. The seed is on your inside. Say the seed is within me. Say the seed is within me. You are struggling today to make 100 naira, 200, 1000 naira. And you are saying what kind of life is this? That is the journey of the seed. The seed is often despised, ladies and gentlemen. This, oh my goodness. If you will not chop that seed and respect that seed, I can tell you something. There is no corn seed in the dustbin that grows dustbin. It will grow as corn. You will break out. You will rise out of that mess. You will blossom and flourish in that mess. Because the seed cannot be subdued. The seed cannot be hindered. The seed cannot be stopped. You can try to keep it down for a while. But I can tell you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That seed will break out. Say I am a seed of destiny. I am breaking out. I am not hearing you hilltop. Say I am a seed of destiny. I am breaking out. Say it I am breaking out. There is no obstacle that will stop you. I don't know where you are living in. I don't know what situation surrounds you. I don't know what the enemy has put around you to discourage you that you are a non-entity. But that devil is a liar. The seed will grow. The characteristic of the seed is not in the environment. It's in the seed itself. When you shoot up, you will manifest your true nature. And the Bible declares that you are made in the image and in the likeness of God. There is power within you. There is prosperity within you. There is success within you. There is increase within you. In the name of Jesus. Declare with me Heavenly Father. Let the power of my seed be unleashed as I take this communion today in the name of Jesus pray in tongues somebody pray and command a release for your seed 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 rasta fida kolo brekeses jiga domelions kavila tosos In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Now I want to I want us to do some, put some things aside, do, do them quickly, major components of the service before we sit at the communion table. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to give God a seed. Now, your offering today, I need you to call it a seed because that's what it is every time. But many of us don't do it. We don't do that. We don't call it what it is. It's a seed. So your, your harvest actually is impossible for the devil to handle if you understand this principle. So we are going to get your offering out, your tithes, your convention pledge, whatever giving you have on your person. And if you are out there, if you are out there joining the service virtually, use the account numbers on your screen. Use the account numbers on your screen right now. And we are going to give God this seed. This offering is a seed, which means we are planting it. So that the potential of the seed can be unleashed. If you are in an on-site service, you are going to have three folders like this. If you are giving cash, use it. I have given my own offerings before I got into this service. But every time I come, I ensure that the folders around me are not empty. That's why you see me a lot of times. I am pulling something out and I'm putting it into the folders. It is not because I have not given. I have given my phone. You see me, I'm touching the offering bowl with my phone because I have given earlier. 
I give deliberately because I know the power of the seed. Now prepare your seed and begin to pray in tongues over it. Pray, pray, and, and prophesy to the seed. ready with this declare with me in the name of Jesus I give this seed releasing it into destiny nothing will stop my seed and nothing will stop me as this seed goes forth let it come back to me with abundance in a name that is above every other name Jesus Christ the son of the living God Lord do what man cannot do as I give this seed in the matchless name of Jesus now angels of God go forth orchestrate my harvest and bring it to me and bring it along financially and in other ways that money cannot buy in the name of Jesus thank you for doing it we appreciate you father in Jesus name we pray let your amen shake this house let your amen shake this house let your amen shake this house you talk let your amen shake the house in Jesus matchless name if you are here you are, giving, you are giving an offering I want to urge you if you have never said Jesus come into my heart become my Lord and personal Savior offer your life as an offering unto the Lord first wherever you are pray this prayer with you say Heavenly Father I receive Jesus Christ now into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior come in take my sins away write my name in the book of life make me your child I want to serve you for the rest of my life and fill me with the Holy Ghost I ask it now in Jesus name Amen we present you into God's garden as a seed and pray that God will fertilize your presence and cause you to flourish and blossom for him and in your destiny for the rest of your life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you are believing God for healing in any part of your body, I stand with you in faith and I declare, be healed. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to the tip of your toes, be healed in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing it. Now rush in your testimonies. If all you have experienced is a little shift in the situation, begin to thank God for it and it will keep increasing. The manifestation will keep increasing. Will keep increasing until you experience the fullness of the manifestation. That is what is going on now. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we pray for these communion elements. We ask that you will anoint them. As we take the elements, Lord, do for us what the body and the blood of Christ was meant to do. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. If you are out there virtually, get a communion elements. Look for something. Look for bread. Look for crackers, something. Get your wine. Get your juice. And I pray the blessing of God upon you. And let the blessing of the communion rest upon you. Your family, your children, everything that concerns you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now this is what you are going to be praying as you are taking the communion. See, that seed, that seed, what are you people playing? What are you guys playing? They play something that flows. Now, for 4,000 years, the seed was dormant. There are seeds you have planted. You have not seen the harvest. In the realm, what I call the seed world. Right? Something is restraining your seed from producing. See, Satan cannot kill any seed. He can only steal it, but he can't kill it. Seed cannot be killed by the devil. You are going to do something. You are going to pray. Every seed that has my name attached to it and my destiny connected to it, 
as I take this communion today, let that, let that seed be unlocked Amen. and begin to generate accelerated harvest this emergency month. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Pray with me, Heavenly, Heavenly Father. As I take this communion, as I take this communion let, the seed let the seed that I have given, that I have given and, the me, and the seed that is in me and every seed, and every seed that, is me, that is connected to me be unleashed, be unleashed unlocked, unlocked to produce a mighty harvest, to produce a mighty harvest in, the in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin your prayer. Begin prayer. This is the new covenant in my blood. Take this cup and drink it in remembrance of me. Drink the cup if you have not done that yet. Let the grace of God rest mightily upon his people. I declare and decree that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord make this for you a month of emergency interventions. There shall be no more delays. The 11th hour miracles will characterize every day of this month. In the name of Jesus. Everything that belongs to you by way of a harvest. Because of the seeds you have planted, planted in the past. We command the doors that were locked against them to be opened. We apply the key of the name of Jesus to unleash the power of the seed. Let every serpent that is after your seed be bruised. In the name of Jesus. 
Let your testimonies break forth and flourish. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. And everybody said a roar in amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Pastor, do we have any announcements tonight? Now we have a few announcements before we close this service. Did you get something out of tonight? If you understand this, you will never negotiate your seed ever again. Your life, you yourself, you are a seed. You are an unstoppable seed. Yes, come on, Pastor Carlo, come on. We are behind schedule. So take these few announcements and then we're done tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, tomorrow, let's not forget, 6 a.m. to 6.30, we're joining our Father in the Lord. And then tomorrow afternoon, 12 to 1, the prayers continues in the evening by 5.30. On Friday, we'll be praying in the afternoon by 12 to 1. In the evening, we will join the virtual prayer meeting. So there will be no actual prayer meetings on Friday. We'll all be meeting in the cloud. And then on Saturday by 7 a.m. is ownership here in preparation for Top Life Convention. And all Please the, put your hands together. And all the branches, they should do ownership and clean them. Yes, sir. And all the branches, satellite churches, you're seeing me right now. Please make sure this is also happening simultaneously in your branches and satellite churches. Now, just to inform us also that Saturday the 20th, in the convention, we'll be having the Youth Summit. Put your hands together. That program is packaged for all youths in this commission, whether you're single or a student. So please, let's get ready. We will give you more details. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Top Life Convention is winding up. I mean, it's, the, the fire is burning. And I know that extraordinary things are already happening. Let's rise up to our feet. Praise the name of Jesus. Are we blessed tonight? Are we blessed tonight? I'll be looking out for you in the prayer meeting in the morning. You know, many of us do a lot of things on social media except do what we please God. I pray that you will be in the number of those that God will be happy with. You know, this you show picture that is like this, and show, some even show crazy pictures. What are you doing with such ugly things? The whole you. You know, use it to invite people for prayer meeting. Invite them for what? Prayer meeting. People are having breakthroughs. I got a testimony yesterday. Someone received 400,000 gift. 400,000. Another person received 200,000 and another 500,000 gift. Someone with partial blindness, the eye opened. So what are you waiting for? A sister whose face, balls broke out in her face. They were balls. The pimples were larger than pimples. Balls broke out. There was a word for her. And in less than one week, her face was like baby face. She sent us before pictures and after pictures. And she's rejoicing from Abuja. I got a testimony today of a breakthrough that happened for someone from California, United States of America. <laughs> to the tune of so many tens of thousands of dollars and a healing of marriage. So many testimonies happen. So don't be left out. You can't be inside the pot and something that is outside the pot will be benefiting more than you. Praise God. Come on, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name. The Lord will lead you home safely. Tell brethren.